Praise the Lord. You know, uh, there's things that uh, we, when we were growing up, they had building blocks that we played with to build some things. And we we even built forts with blankets and whatever else to have a place to have fun and play. But even the recent kids, my son and his friend especially, were involved in Legos, the building blocks that put together to build and do to build something they weren't thinking about. And they built some fan. Some of them built uh, friends fit, built some fantastic things. And there's even a museum you can go to to see some of this stuff and how the uh, Legos make. But there are t small. There are different sizes because they make big ones for l the little tots. But they're actually can lock together and make a building block to build something. Now, construction workers, and my husband was, he's an electrician in construction, but construction workers used some kind of materials too, whether it be blocks, whether it be wire, whether it be whatever they needed to build a, a building or a structure of some kind for a purpose. And there was all kinds of different structures. Right, the scripture I'm running across some scriptures this morning. I've read and studied these before, and you know, I thought about it, and I said, "Lord, how do I name this message?" And uh, the name is "Building Blocks." It's found in these in some scriptures here, and I'm going. We're going to go through these blocks of building to maturity, just like the pop, uh, the scripture gives us building blocks is all sorts, different places throughout the Word. So we can become mature. We were talking about before service that we can become what he wants us to be, to begin to be that mature Christian, that mature person in God and to be like him and take on his character and take on. We have Christ, but to really take on who he is and be part him and his ways, be part of our ways and and our thinking no longer the. Uh, of this earth. But it takes effort and work. Just like an, uh, when kids build. And when uh, constructor, uh, construction workers build. It takes time, effort, money, whatever. The same thing with us. It takes a little bit of effort. A little bit of time. A little bit of the, whatever. To get accomplish what God wants in our lives. Just like this next. Po this first popular scripture. We can't do it alone. Jesus even said that he could not do anything unless the Father told him or unless the Father helped him. He couldn't do things of himself. And, of course, this is a uh, <clears throat> scripture we've heard throughout the ages. Uh, in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So we can build, we can change, we can have that attitude of becoming the way God had set up for us to become, becoming the Christian, becoming the worthy disciple of him because of him, through him that gives us strength, through what he did. Here's the amplified version. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. Christ empowers us to do it. We have to do the work and we have to make an effort and change, but it's Christ that empowers us and gives the ability so we can do that. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him, through Christ, who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. We, are, are, we cannot be the disciples and be the prophets, be the uh, apostles, be whatever God had put in our lives without Christ. Being complete in us and working in us and helping us to get where we need to go. All right, here's the next scripture, the, the main scripture I have. It's Philippians, no, it's, I'm sorry, Second Peter, the first chapter. I'm going to re be reading the third through the eighth verse. <clears throat> Seeing this divine power has grant, 
has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. So the divine power of Christ uh, and what he did on the cross and everything that he had in his words and all that he, he had set up in uh, statutes in the Old Testament, the New Testament, everything that Paul had said, it is he gives us the power and grant these things unto us pertaining to our life and godliness, our way of walking, the way we should be. Through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent <laughs> promises. So that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. It's we're able to be overcomers. We're able to do the works of Christ. We're able to do the things because of what he did. Because of him. We, that divine nature, that divine uh, godliness and everything that he has in the next co couple of verses actually list the things that we need to change in us. That we need to work on. You, whether you work on one at a time or whether you work on them all together or work here and there a few. But these building blocks bring us to spiritual maturity or perfection. The perfection word perfection in the Bible means to be mature. And he said without it, we can't make heaven our home. He said you got to be perfect. For now, for this very reason also, applying all diligence... We know the term is diligence, that we apply with all our might. Like in uh, the scripture, Jesus quoted the scripture from Deuteronomy. He says, to love God with all your mind, might, body, soul, everything you are, to uh, apply yourself to it. To apply yourself to the things of God. To apply yourself to the word. Apply yourself to what he wants and what he wants for you. In your faith, supply moral excellence. And I'll explain each one of these in a minute, but I'll read through it. And in your moral excellence, knowledge. And in your knowledge, self-control. And in your self-control, perseverance. And in your perseverance, godliness. And in your godliness, brotherly kindness. And in your brotherly kindness, love. The last section of these scriptures eight through uh, the rest of this, the eight, nine, and through 11. For if these qualities are yours, listen to that. If those things, and I'm, we're going to go through them. In fact, I'll go back to the, uh, if the, I'll pick it up in a minute. But f for if these qualities, those things, these are just some of the things of the word. But he says, if these qualities, if these characteristics are in you that are yours and are increasing, then it means you and you what you get a little bit, you want to build on it, get stronger, get more, get higher in it, maturity, get higher in God. They render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because you're in the maturity of God, because you have these things working through you and working in your lives, you can be able to stand what the enemy is about to bring to this earth. We're only seeing the beginnings of what is about to happen. And some of us, we I don't know exactly when, but we may still be here when it come, when things happen on earth, some things. But we're going to be able to be able to stand. We're going to have to stand and we're going to be strong and mature. When you're mature and strong like soldiers and strong and know who you are in God, then you can be able to fight the enemy. You're able to speak against what the enemy's trying to deceive us with and be able to know the truth. And like the scripture says, know the truth and it shall set you free. But he says, those who lack these qualities is blind or short-sighting. 
excuse me, short-sighted, having forgotten his perfect purification from his former sins. You've forgotten the sins you're not building up. You, most Christians and a lot of churches, they, they teach about getting saved, but don't go any further. We got to build. We got to get stronger. We got to mature. If we don't, and I seen a video this week on Facebook and I showed it to Kenneth that a minister was saying, and somebody he listens to on radio was saying, because of the weaknesses in the churches, they're not telling you all, all the word. You're not teaching them to stand in the word. You're not teaching them what, how to be strong. You're not teaching them all these things. When the enemy comes, they're going to be taken over. They're going to accept because I've experienced some people I know personally that, and even on Facebook that they're accepting things of the enemy. They're accepting the Antichrist system. They're accepting the belief systems of the world because they don't know. They're not taught or they don't get into the word for themselves. They don't get strong and get mature. How do you think Jesus was able to stand all the persecution and all the stuff that he had to go through if he didn't mature too? Sure, he came to earth a God in the flesh, but he still had to learn to walk as a man on earth sometimes. He had to mature. He had to work. Same with the disciples. They couldn't have endured all the persecution until they got strong in the Lord. Because <clears throat> Think about it. Peter at uh, Jesus' uh, trial even denied Christ. Here he was a follower of Jesus for three years. And he still was so weak he couldn't uh, stand up against the tr stand up against the enemy when the enemy's going to attack you. Enemy's going to tell you something. There's been people that could have gone to church, but they don't because I'm going to speak the truth. I'm going to speak what the Bible says. I'm going to speak, and there's a couple people say, "Well, I don't want to do that," but you're going to have to. Therefore, brethren. Um, be all the more diligent to make certain about this, his calling and choosing you. For as long as you are, as you practice these things, you will never stumble. See, there it is. You'll get so strong and mature that you won't fall when the enemy tricks you. He's a liar he's a deceptive one he is out to trick you and destroy you and kill steal and destroy even jesus said that but if you aren't strong in god and mature in him uh you won't be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy but we need to be strong <clears throat> For in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be abundantly supplied to you. So we can get mature and have be sinless and have a sinless life. I've heard so many says, God knows my heart. I, it doesn't matter, you know, he'll forgive and all that. But what if you die before you get a chance to ask for forgiveness? You don't want to chance that. We got to live for the Lord 100% sold out to him. And to seek his face. All right. These, it requires, like I said, it requires work and effort and need to be part of our lives and walk with God. This They bring to us maturity and perfection to be like him. We cannot do it on our own power. It takes diligence and determination. Sometimes determination to, because the enemy will try to distract you. So many times he'll try to distract you. When I've had to ask the Lord, please forgive me because he's told me to go pray or go in the other room or go do something. And then I get distracted and busy doing something. And he says, I have to ask the Lord, please forgive me. I got to go do this. You know, I got to. It takes determination to be willing to obey and willing to do what he says, willing to listen to the word, get all you can out of the word and do it. 
It takes God to empower us and accomplish that tax. Because, because of that fact, G, this goes back to where Jesus said, I give life and that more abundantly. When we be mature in him, we have life in Christ when we get full, first get salvation. But when we become mature and gain more of him, we get more of power. We get more of his spirit, more of everything that he is dwelling in us, working through us. It changes us physically. It changes our thinking. It changes who we are. And we're more happy, more at peace when things do happen. We don't have to worry about things. We're not all. I've told people before, if you're not living fully for the Lord and you're not living under in his presence and not being mature in God, when troubles hit you, you're going to go crazy, have a panic attack. Well, you can just trust God and know, Jesus, you said it in your word that you would take care of us, that you would be there, right? I'm going to go through those points that the scripture gave. These are building blocks for maturity. He talked about doing all these things in diligence. That means really with all your heart, all that you can. Moral excellence is having virtue. Being of a good, what was the scripture uh, term they used in the scripture, having a good report said about you. That being re highly respected of God and others, your, your peers around you. A person of integrity. That like uh, my apostle, or pastor apostle said, he says, and to be have integrity is doing knowing and doing the right thing in every situation. And you're going to do it with excellence. You're going to do it with the love of God. You're going to do it with everything in your power to do right and stand right, have righteousness living through your life. Having a good report said about you. Having a reputation of good things. Knowledge. He says you get moral excellence. He said also to get knowledge. Learn to get to know God and his word. No, all study. What does the scripture say? Study to show yourself approved or rightly dividing the word. Among, and then when things happen, you know, this is what the word says. That ain't true. I've run across that a few times because I know what the word says. And that ain't, that ain't true. That isn't God. It, it helps you to discern the many false Religions. It helps you discern the many false preachers and pre uh, and apostles, uh, prophets that are out there. Because <clears throat> there is many, many singers, pastors, leaders, and everything in the United States here alone that are leading people astray. They're leading false gospel. That are leading false truths. But if you don't know the truth, how is it going to help you? We need to study and know what God said in his word. So when something comes up, you can re either have to say something to somebody. I've had to actually tell people, no, stay away from that one because they're not teaching the truth. Because I know, I experienced it, I've seen it. we got to know, got to know God, know all about God and know when you know about God and know his word, then you it really makes you want to worship him more. Because, wow, sometimes there's things that's like, oh, really, God? You know, how like the song uh, the kids sang growing up, uh, God, our God is an awesome God. He is an awesome, wonderful God. So we need to get all the knowledge we can in God. Get all his word, the right knowledge, not this world knowledge and the uh, the fake news of things, but the true news of God, the true gospel. All right. The next thing he said, we need to have self-control. This is having discipline. And I was thinking about when uh, we were listening to somebody on TV, an interview on TV with a minister saying that when they get up in your face and try something, you have to have discipline in God knowing 
I know what's right, that you're not going to, you're going to stay in integrity in how you approach the situation. You're not going to be so ready to hit the guy in the face if they come against you. You're ready to show love. You're ready to, uh, you're disciplined in your manner, in the way you walk, in the way you think. Disciplined according to the word. Being, that's what was it, uh, one of the fruits of the, uh, of the flesh is having incontinence. That's not, uh, that's the opposite of self-control. We have, we need to have self-control. Control over how we do things, how we do it. Be disciplined in the word. Perseverance. That's endurance. Having patience. Holding on till the end. Holding on till the promise. Holding on to what God, and being consistent. What does the scripture say in James? It says, "You, uh, he that wavers as a sea is not fit for the kingdom. Not fit to get answers from God. Being consistent in our walk with God to where when God says something, we're not up here, not down here, and all over the place. It's easy to do, too. It's easy to be wavering all over the place and lose faith and lose hope. But having endurance, patience, consistency. And I noticed this in the uh, dictionary. It said it was also having, being cheerful. So you're having hope. You're being hopeful while you wait. <laughs> I, I don't know, but it was there. So where you need to ha be consistent in everything. Okay. Godliness. Everything about God. Godliness is righteousness, especially holiness. Whereas the scripture says, without holiness, you shall not see God. So many religions and so many churches and so many things say teach, and I've run across it. We were uh, saying, even uh, a minister we were listening to last night was talking about how that there's so many people that think it's okay to do this little sin, okay to do this little thing and everything and still go to church. You're safe. No, you're not. You have to stay in holiness and stay right before God. And it takes the word going through, flowing through you. If the word's in you, you will, what is it? The scripture says, thy word have I hidden my heart that I may not sin. So that word of holiness, that word of righteousness and whatever he has is flowing in us so we can stay righteous and holy before God. Brotherly kindness. This is brotherly love. Goodwill, benevolence, helping our neighbor, helping those around us, showing God and showing love, witnessing and talking and being uh, Christians before showing the God, love of God before the those around us, those we work with, those that we uh, minister to, or those that we wherever we walk. There was two different loves here. One was brotherly kindness, a love towards the neighbor, love towards uh, our fellow man and showing God goodwill to them and helping them. This other one is now he wants you to have the agape love, which is God's true love. If God, agape love, that real love of God is in you, it's going to come. What did he say? You are my disciples, and they'll know you are my disciples by your love, your love for God, your love that's flowing through you. The God, love of God that's in you will flow out to people, that will help people. When we're able to, we can, anybody in this world can show brotherly kindness and help one another. You see it all the time, different ones. Uh, helping their neighbor, helping someone in trouble. But when you show them agape love, when you show them God's love, when you exude that love of God and that agape love, it changes them. It actually makes them stop and desire the things of God. 
people come in eventually. There's a couple, there's a young lady we're working with now because we're trying to show that agape love. She's almost to the point of coming to church, but we're able to pray for her, minister to her, and she says she's never felt this before. It's different. So God is there to help us to learn <clears throat> the four things. It was all uh, the generality of the four things that was taught in these scriptures is we need to learn and get to know God. How can you do the other things if you don't know God, if you don't know the word, if you don't know everything, if you don't get to know who he is and his character? How can you express the character if you don't know anything about it? We need to have the mind of Christ and have the body and thinking and walk of God through us on a daily basis. But we got to, it takes getting in prayer and the word. That's what it takes. It takes getting his word and, and prayer. Develop perseverance. This one is, uh, when it comes to patience, it seems like a hard thing for people to do. And I, when I was younger, I was even thinking about it when the Lord says you need to have patience. And I said, Lord, teach me patience. Don't ask God to teach you patience. I think I'm still learning patience. <laughs> That's been how many years ago? <laughs> we need to develop perseverance, having that patience. And Jesus was very patient. Sometimes he was pretty like, I was liking it sometimes, especially with his disciples, because they always like, don't you get it yet? <laughs> but he was very patient with them anyway. But he felt like, I'm sure he was in his tone of voice, the way he talked at times with his disciples, like, oh, and I know exactly as a leader how he must have felt. Like, ooh, can you really do it? <laughs> But he was very patient. And he was patient with those he ministered to. Think about it. The woman that uh, touched the him, his, his talit, the tassel on his talit for prayer that had leg, legally, according to the Jewish religion, if she did that, he was unclean for seven, so many days. He had to go back and repent and get away from the crowd because she touched him. But he was patient enough to know she had a need and I, it needed to be taken care of. She reached out, he reached out regardless. And while we're doing and learning and growing, we need to do God's will. Do what he asks us to do. Be obedient to him. Sometimes being obedient teaches us some things, areas that we need to learn a little better. Because then when you obey and make mistakes, okay, I haven't quite got that one yet, you know. Then we go back and work on something. All right. The fourth thing, and that it, this was all summing up to say that we love others, because we got to love. We if we don't show love, it won't help us to grow. It won't help us to. Uh, he says, if you don't have love, if you don't show love, you're not mine. That's pretty harsh to say. And this last scripture found in Colossians, the first chapter, 9 through 10. For this reason also, since the day we've heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with knowledge, with the knowledge of his will and the spiritual wisdom and understanding. All these things, he says, Paul was saying, I want all these, all the things that you're doing and helping me. But he says, I would want you to be filled with his wisdom, his knowledge of everything and understand what God is and who he is. Spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you will walk in the manner worthy of the Lord. Notice that manner walking Worthy of God, walking in his steps, walking according to be well-pleasing to God.
that you will walk in all matters worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, hearing, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. See, you may get some knowledge, you may get some wisdom and understanding, but as you go, get some more. Keep going until you get some more. And it, one scripture says, if you lack anything or lack any wisdom or knowledge, he says, ask for it. Go back and seek for it. <clears throat> Strengthened with all power. See, with all these things, you're getting strong and you become a, a strong wall or strong tower. Strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. So as we grow and mature in him, he then we become qualified once we get to know things and get to know the word and know what it says. Then we can uh, follow it. We can experience it. We can go about doing what he says and working. And we can experience, uh, there's in Corinthians, said, then I have not seen and ear have not heard all that God has prepared for us. Some of the things we can't experience because of, just like a child. When they are small, you don't give them just everything. They don't experience everything. But when you then mature, then you're able to take some things. You're able to experience some things. You're able to walk in all the things of God, to experience his miracles, experience his power, experience his glory, to experience angels, to experience all the things that God would have for us. Because we're trying to our best to walk according to the word. Walking according to God's way. And knowing what he has to say for our lives. And we can build up ourselves and become like Christ and have his character and nature. We need to have his character and nature. He, he lived on earth to show us what God's character is. How to walk again like Adam and Eve in the garden did. He says, I want to show you what where you what you're missing after all these years. Get back to what and experience and walk like me. Be like me. Put on the mind of Christ. Thinking. It's not of the world's thinking either. Because the world would like you to think a lot of junk. It is the abundant life, like I mentioned, that God Jesus had spoke about. <clears throat> There's a also come to my mind that uh, I was thinking about when I was doing this. Bill Grace wrote a song, and the chorus was coming to my mind. More, remember, more of you, more of you. I've had it all, but what I need is more of you. What we need is to have more of him, to get more of these things that we're, I was talking about. More of knowledge, more of love, more of uh, perseverance, more of, uh, of integrity, more of everything that we can have. So we can walk according to his word and experience it and show others what Christ is really about. To show God's love to everyone. Hallelujah, Jesus. So it's walk in his way and walk in his pathway that he has assigned for us. And it's all laid out in the scripture for us. We may walk different pathways and do different things because like the scripture says, we're all in the body of Christ. Some people do something and somebody else does something else, but we're all Walking and like Christ. We're all supposed to be like Christ. We're all supposed to be mature. We're all supposed to work and walk in perfection. We're all supposed to walk without sin. We're all supposed to do these things. With those things, then we have the power and abilities and a lot of things to walk in the miracles. Walk in the things that wherever our pathway may take us. 